let's talk motion graphics and animation. Now, I know I've been gone for a while for most of you that are subscribed to the channel. It's because I've been looking into some other tools, you could say, for motion graphics, specifically in animation. Now, although I'll be making an emphasis on Linux, these tools are available for Windows and Mac OS. When it comes to doing motion graphics, you have several tools at your disposal. Now, you could try to do motion graphics using Gaten Live. And you can, but it will be at a limited level. Or rather, you can do simple motion graphics using Caden Live. Now, you could jump inside of Blender, which is basically a Swiss Army knife, where you can do just about anything you want. You can go from frame by frame, you can combine 3D or have it 2.5D. You can do whatever you want when it comes to Blender. I will not be discussing Blender for this though, because Depending on your hardware and skill level and how much time or how quickly you want to output what you're making, this might vary a lot. Now, what is motion graphics? The most simplest way that I could put it is to simply take graphic or graphic design, illustrations and such, and adding motion to it. So it's not necessarily a full-on 2D animation or 3D animation. These are just the mediums, you could say, that you use for it. Motion graphics is taking graphic element and adding motion to them. So you can definitely do that inside of Kitten Alive. But now, if you want to do some more advanced or dynamic motion graphics, there are some limitations when it comes to trying to do them inside of Kitten Alive. However, you can combine Kitten Alive with something like Glaxnomate. Glaxnomate is basically an animation software that can intertwine or work together with Kitten Alive. Now, before we jump into Glaxnomate, let's jump into Kitten Alive first, and I'll show you a new feature that might make uh, we could say motion graphics a tad easier when it comes to the transform. So over here inside of Kitten Live, I have my clip here on the timeline. If you might be familiar with this from the tracking, the motion tracking video, I'll add a transform to it. Now with the transform added on the canvas, if you have the edit mode enabled, we can now still scale our image. We also have this little dot here that they added so you can rotate your image. And if you were to have let's say inside of settings, if you were to have the enable built-in effects enabled, you would also get, so let's go ahead and activate this, the ability to flip your image around. So I'll delete the transform and here we have our built-in transform. If it is not turned on when you hover over the project monitor, you'll have this little button here at the top to enable transforms. Now this little feature makes it easier to jump into motion graphics or rather to dynamically transform your elements. There is one thing missing, which I believe they are working on it. It is on the roadmap, which is the ability to change the position of the pivot point, which is something that can be very crucial when jumping into motion graphics, the ability to choose where an element pivots from. So if you had a leaf and it was dead center on your project monitor, having the pivot point be at the very center makes it a lot more difficult to move it around. Whereas if you can move the pivot point to one of the ends, then you have a more natural motion for that leaf. So this was just to show you this new feature inside of Kaden Alive, which is the ability to rotate directly from the project monitor. So now back to motion graphics with Glaxnomate. Before you can use Glaxnomate in combination with Kaden Live, you first have to go up to your menu bar inside of settings down to configure Kaden Live and then go inside of environment and choose default apps. Inside of the animation editing, simply choose the location of Glaxnomate on your system. In this case, I have it as an app image. Now, for those of you using Linux, if you are using the Flatpak version of Kaden Live, because of certain restrictions, you might not be able to call out Glaxnomate unless you do some tweaking to try and allow the Flatpak version of Kaden Live to access what it would need to run Glaxnomate, which is why for this demonstration, I will be using the app image of Kaden Live because by default, I use the Flatpak version. But regardless, simply set the destination to where your Glaxnomate is installed. When you're done, press apply and then okay. So I'll save this, I'll close out of it. So I've just switched over to the app image version of Kaden Live. I'll go ahead and open the same file. Now to create an animation clip that will be open inside of Glaxnomate, simply go up to inside of the project bin, go up near the play button, click on the drop down, and go to create animation. You can choose where you want to save this Glaxnomate file. You also have to choose the duration. Now I already know that down here I'm working with 
roughly five seconds of footage. I could make this six seconds and then press OK. This will create a Glaxomate clip over here. Now, in my case, it automatically opens it inside of Glaxomate or close out of Glaxomate for now. Now, I'll drag this over to the timeline and if I scrub, you'll see nothing happens. Now, by double clicking on this animation clip, it should open it inside of Glaxomate. Inside of Glaxomate, you'll see that we have our video clip already there. So this makes it a lot easier to match your motion graphics or animation to what is going to be inside of your footage. Now, Glaxomate is somewhat straightforward. I personally have not really enjoyed using it. So you have various tools at your disposal. So you can make basic shapes, you can draw your shape, you have a Bezier. So if you were trying to make, I don't know, a thought bubble, you could do that simply enough. Maybe using a circle could work best. Here's a thought bubble. I'll change the color to white. Grab my selection tool. I'll go down to transform. And in position, I'll add a keyframe. You can also enable the record keyframes with this little key up here. So it's recording the keyframes. Move forward. Click on my shape or click on the plus here, move it. It also keyframed the color change. So that would be inside of fill. So this is our keyframe here for the fill. I'll delete the keyframe, so clear animation. I'll make it white again. Actually, I'll undo or turn off the record keyframes. Make it white, there we go. So you can create your animation from here. Now if I save, you don't have to close out of Glaxomate. I'll just switch over to Caden Live. And over here we have our thought bubble and it's moving, it's animated. This really gives you an integrated experience, but I'm not very fond of the Glaxomate uh, UI and the overall experience, but it can work for, for most, I would imagine. Instead, what I've been using is Friction, Friction Graphics. Now, Friction does not integrate with Kitten Live the same way that Glaxomate does, but there are a few workarounds, although some of them might be considered a tad heavier. But if you take into consideration a solid editing pipeline, once you get to picture lock in your edit, that's when you jump into editing your VFX or your motion graphics to combine it with live footage, for example. So once you're in picture lock, you can render the little segments that are meant to have the motion graphics or even render a low resolution version of your video and then import that into friction. So there are various ways to render out what you need to add the motion graphics to in a way where it can render out quickly. So no effects, nothing really added to it. Simply the clip that you know that will be used as reference for the motion graphics. Let's jump into Friction now. So if I go ahead and open Friction, this is what Friction looks like. So let's say I open a recent file here. So waving hair animation. Now, Friction would be very reminiscent to After Effects for those of you who might have used After Effects or even are familiar with the interface and the workflow. It is not a one-to-one, -one, but it is very reminiscent of it. So over here, I have seen one which you could say is a pre-comp of its own where I imported another composition, like another pre-comp or composition. So if I jump to the other scene, so this is the main scene I was working in, you have all the different layers. I'm going to hide the color selection up here. We have the different layers. I have it broken down into their own groups. So in the front here, we have these pillars, let me control Z. We have our character. And if I play back, we get this little motion, waving hair, a little zoom in, zoom out. I've been enjoying working with friction, discovering it. But a quick disclaimer, as of the recording of this video, and if you're watching this later in time, then maybe it's already out. But as of this recording, we are at friction one, RC2, so release candidate number two. The official release is 0 0.9 point something. So the version one is not yet out. I'm using the release candidate number two. It's scheduled to release a candidate number three before the official release of version one. I use the release candidate because for one, it is stable enough for me and it introduces a lot of new features 
and I do my part in reporting certain bugs and feature requests and little things like that to see if I can maybe give a helping hand in the development. Friction also allows for shaders. You can think of them as plugins or effects. And these shaders allow you to do a lot more and you can create your own shaders as well. They have a page that shows you how you can make these shaders, how it works. It also has expressions. I actually use a couple of expressions in this. For the waving hair, I put it on a loop by using expressions. So it has a lot of features and it's very feature rich. And now I know this is animation. Well, technically this could also be motion graphics. Uh, you also have text animation. And I know some of you have asked before to do uh, text bubble motion graphics using Caden Live. Now it's not that it's impossible. You can actually do it. As I've mentioned, you can use the rotoscoping effect. You can also use solid color clips make the shape of your bubbles, and then simply animate that with a transform. So there are ways to make what you want inside of Kaden Live. You can also simply combine it with Inkscape or GIMP or whichever software that you use, whether it be Photoshop, Affinity, uh, Clip Studio, whichever one you're, you're using, and create your graphics using those tools and simply import them inside of Kaden Live. So you have options. But using a dedicated tool might just make it more dynamic. It will give you more options and maybe a whole new avenue of what you can do. Now, allow me to share with you a couple animations that I've made using Friction. Over here, we have the very first animation that I made, and this was me opening Friction, and within a couple minutes to an hour, I made this little guy running, and I found out how to make it loop, and all that good stuff. And from there, I decided, okay, I finally found a tool that will allow me to really get into that expressive work that I want to do in a light manner as well, because it doesn't take a lot of resources, at least not from my experience. My laptop is not exactly high end, no dedicated graphics card. This is an i5, eighth generation, very simple. So here are a few other animations that I made. We have the bouncing ball because of course, you have to do a bouncing ball. Then I have this little retro ping pong tennis match. Then I decided to make this, which is following a couple After Effects tutorials. We have the melting jello. Next, we have the text bubble animation, followed by this rotating fake 3D house. And finally, the little waving hair that we just saw. Now, this one over here, this last one, is more of a short animation, something part of a testing or training project for a much bigger project or a series of projects. And so you get to see it here. Uh, enjoy. So that right there was, well, the code name is Bloody Switch. In the end, I think we're going with Bloody Mary, but these are just really code names for the bigger project. And this was done entirely inside of Friction. Now, the sound design and all was done with Caden Live. Since sound editing or audio editing inside of Friction is not that comfortable, not comfortable at all, really, I simply made the animation, then I imported it into Caden Live, and from there I finished everything and put everything together. So I still have to go back and forth between the tools. The graphic assets are sketched using GIMP, then they are vectorized using Inkscape, and Friction allows you to import your SVG files. So I can simply have a character design with a turnaround and everything, and then bring it inside of Friction. So all this to say that when it comes to motion graphics, you have certain tools at your disposal and you can use them in combination with Caden Live for those of you that use Caden Live. And as I've mentioned, you can export or render low res versions of your videos from Caden Live and then simply import them inside of Friction for those of you who might choose Friction. And from there, you can use that video as a reference. For those of you using Glaxnamate, you see that they work together quite well. So you won't really have to do any export, import, uh, back and forth. Let me know down in the comments which one of these animations you'd like to see a breakdown for first. I'm thinking of starting with the bouncing ball once I've covered the 
overall user interface and features of Friction. And that's really what I've been up to, among other things. But yeah, I have a couple ones that I haven't shown there, they're not finished, uh, working out a couple bugs, um, sending feedback and bug reports to developers, a lot of back and forth. You can visit the Friction website. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. For those of you who want to support the channel, I have a Ko-fi account. I'll leave the link down in the description as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.